So, when, so far when we've talked about stress, we've ignored one detail. And that is that the rock is saturated with a fluid. I mean, in a sedimentary basin that we care about, the rocks are saturated with fluid, right? And quite frankly, you know, all of the ground, excluding some very shallow region near the surface, is saturated with fluid. And that fluid saturation causes an additional pressure. Right? We call that the pore pressure. And so if this was a say our, our little re representative cube that when we talk about stress, right, we apply in some external pressure or the tectonic forces do, tectonic stresses do, but then internal to this, the fluid itself has a pressure. Right, so there's pores and the pores are connected by some channels and all of these apply some additional pressure. So what do you think would happen if the pore pressure was so high that it exceeded the difference in the principal stresses? Exactly. Right. So in situ, in situ in the earth, in a normal scenario, you can roughly bound the relationship of the pore pressure to the minimum and maximum to the minimum and maximum principal stresses because of that, right? Otherwise, you just have continuous hydraulic fracture occurring all the time. Right? By the way, hydraulic fractures do occur naturally in the earth too, right? due to changes in pore pressure. Okay, so the way we account for the pore pressure is through something called an effective stress. Okay. And, you know, the pressure in a thermodynamic sense is a scalar thing, right? It's, it's a value. Like, if you measure the pressure in a fluid, it's just one thing, right? Um, and so the way it acts on the stress tensor is in what we call in a hydrostatic sense, meaning it, it only acts normal in all directions or along the, you, you remember when we transform the stress into a, the stress tensor, when we transform it into the principal directions where there are no shears, then the stress tensor is just diagonal, right? So that's, those are the normal stresses, okay? So the stresses associated with the normal direction are on the diagonal of any stress tensor. And so we just take the, our normal stress tensor This is our normal stress tensor, and we subtract the pore pressure times the identity matrix. So everybody sees this is just P pore pressure times the identity matrix, right? And that gives us the effective stress. <coughs> and just like I mentioned, faulting depends on the effective stress. So faulting or fracture, right? You got to remember all all faults are the result of some fracture in the rock, right? And, and that fracture, or, you know, it depends on the effective stress. So the relationship between the pore pressure and the in situ or tectonic stresses. Okay. 